tools and how they're using Dynamics 365 finance and operations to transform their manufacturing operations. Actually, yesterday, we just all, as we were going through rehearsal, we realized inadvertently we've got like planes, trains, automobiles, and boats. It's like the transport keynote. Uh, but this is a really interesting one. It, it, it pulls together both operations and what's happening on uh, the product side and in the assets that are running the factory. And so a good merger, if you will, of various signals from across the digital feedback loop. Uh, and Kevin's going to show us the good work that Lytton's has done. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Jace. Now, Lytton's is a global car parts manufacturer. They're renowned for innovation in their industry. And they've applied that mindset to their production facilities where they're starting to deploy IoT. Now, that IoT telemetry is being surfaced up for a number of IoT hubs and into an Azure data lake where we can start to create some custom Power BI dashboards. Those dashboards we can start to embed within finance operations. So individuals like our COO can start to see the production health, the utilization, the availability across a group. And if they needed to, they could also focus in on a particular plant. But from a plant perspective, we want to help them drive actionable insights. And we can start to do that through the new capability of IoT intelligence for finance operations, where we can connect sensors to production. And when we're looking at the sensors, we want to look at them in a number of ways. We could be interested in the product quality, we could be interested in the run rate of parts being produced, i.e. performance, or we could fundamentally want to know when a machine has stopped producing. And in each case, we're going to define a number of parameters. I'm actually going to set up the sensor for when the machine goes down. And when I do, I need to associate against a particular IoT hub, which is going to be Woodbridge. I'm going to identify an endpoint, which is going to be an alternator line. And I need to set a threshold. The thresholds are key. Let me set a context. The machinery to create a car alternator is huge. And it will also have an operator physically monitoring it. So, should something cause production to stop, there's going to be a host of tasks that that individual could undertake to quickly unlock it, whether it be removing a jam or running an auto reset sequence. So, enabling a threshold enables us to deal with something locally at the machine before escalating. And of course, if we do have to escalate, then we're likely to escalate on to other individuals within our group via this notification. One of those individuals is going to be the production supervisor, who actually is already really good at monitoring production anyway. And they are using finance and operations and monitoring the production floor through a workspace, which would be extended with a new capability for these new notifications. When I had a notification come through to his workspace, we could show the details. And when we do, we can see a host of information that's perfect. We can see across the top the relevant uh, production order. On the left hand side we can see production jobs that are queued up that are now going to be delayed and we've got a visualisation across time that we could actually zoom in on and see any particular anomalies about the parts being produced over time. And this is where traditionally we would go through the motion of rerouting. We reroute production and then overnight we'd trigger off our master planning. Going forwards we can actually help them because we've introduced a new capability called planning optimization which enables them to run their planning a number of times in the day, getting that production up to its optimum as soon as possible. And in tandem to all this, we've had the notification that the machine is down, and we need to let our maintenance team know that something is wrong. And traditionally, we'd go through the process of perhaps clicking their create work order option. But actually, we can actually take full advantage of the potential of Microsoft Flow working with finance and operations, because Another new capability for finance operations is called business events. So we've had our notification that the machine is down. That's gone to our production supervisor. At the same time, it could be used as the trigger for a flow as a business event. And when that business event occurs, we can go through the motion of actually creating that work order for us automatically. And as a courtesy, we could also send a notification through to perhaps a maintenance supervisor, and we could send a notification to the mobile device of a roaming maintenance technician in the plant. Now, that technician, as they get to that huge machine, 
is going to be confronted with a lot of detail. But to give them an insight, they can go to the work order that has been created that has caused the production to stop. Because the work order also includes the information around the fault. So we can tell immediately that it was raised by our IoT, that it believes it's a, an electrical fault, and the fault is actually related to a malfunctioning fuse. So straight away, we've helped that technician focus in on the fuse, rather than being confronted by this huge machine and having to work out where the problem is to begin with. And they will go through the process of switching out that fuse, they will go through the process of closing off that work order. And that work order is actually part of a new set of capabilities we have called asset management. Now, asset management is not just about the creation of the work order. It's actually about wider management of all the equipment and the product all across the group through the equipment's life cycle. And so from a maintenance supervisor's perspective, we can start monitoring all of our equipment. And we can look at it in a number of ways. We could be looking at it from the notifications of where problems may be occurring through IoT. We could be using a visualization like the number of per, uh, number of work orders that have been created over time and what have been closed. So we can see we've got a slight downward trend and that they're closing more work orders that have been opened. But key is also the equipment tracking. And the equipment tracking has a number of counters. And this is where we can define some counters. And the counters can help us from monitoring those consumable items or aspects that need to be serviced after a period of time. And that can all help drive our planned maintenance schedules. Now in our case, we've had an issue already surfaced with the uh, malfunctioning fuse. And we can see actually on the screen the little status indicator that's actually telling us that fuse relay is getting close to switch out. So we can be proactive with our maintenance and change that threshold and stop that machine from uh, going into a down state uh, because of this fuse. But from a maintenance perspective, we can also look into the future a little bit as well. Because we've got Power BI that is embedded within finance operations. We've got all this data across IoT, work orders, production orders. And we can take advantage of AI and use the key influencers to give us a predicted maintenance view. And so for this machinery here, I've got the key influencers that's highlighting, yes, of course, wear and tear over time is going to impact my production efficiency. But it's also highlighting two other areas around my coiler failures and my conveyor belts. That can steer us, we can be proactive with our maintenance and start putting more energy into our maintenance of those two areas and offset any future production efficiencies. And whilst I'm on this dashboard, I also want to highlight that because we've got Power BI working within finance and operations, we've also included some new custom uh, gestures. So I've got a, a visualization in the top right here that's reflecting maintenance purchase orders. And as a maintenance supervisor, some of these are going to be pertinent to myself. And so I've now got the opportunity to put a custom gesture on, such as my pending purchase orders. So I can click on this, and it's going to take you through to the purchase orders that are relevant for me, that I can approve accordingly. Now all this coming together enables us to help companies like Littles drive actionable insights through these new capabilities of IoT intelligence, asset management, planning optimization, business events with the Power Platform.